that, I'm going to introduce Tina. And I'll ask that she introduce herself and throw in your favorite ice cream to Tina uh, as you introduce yourself. And it is my great pleasure to introduce her to this group in case you don't know Tina or haven't seen her in a while. She's at NASA Langley. I, I'm sure working from there usually, but nobody is working there now. <laughs> and uh, she is also a member of the US Partner Forum and so she'll talk about her role with that but also she does and nasa langley does fabulous work um, really making globe and uh, creating resources for teachers to connect with globe in new and different ways and really super supportive and i'm not going to talk about it too much more kitina but i love the work you're doing with camps too so i hope you share that as well because uh, that might be really something that a lot of partners are interested in looking into as we go down the line. So thank you for sharing and take it away. Okay, thank you, Jen. And um, I know you did not know this, but ice cream is my favorite food. So you could not have picked a more appropriate intro. So thank you for that. However, I will say, I've always said, I don't believe there's an ice cream flavor that I would not be fond of, but I'm going to admit, I've heard a couple today that I might try once, but probably would pass on thereafter. So, um, but thank you for the opportunity to, to share today. Um, and I'm going to see if I can share my screen and how that works from here. Let's see. Okay, that's not going to work. So what I'm gonna do, it's uh, Google Slides, Jen. So if I put that in the chat, you can drive that hopefully. I am happy to drive. Thank you. While you're doing that or getting that started, um, I'll talk a little bit. Um, I am at NASA Langley and I, I have been at NASA Langley for um, about, let's see, nine years now. Um, and prior to that, I was a middle school science teacher for 18 years. Um, I had the privilege of teaching eighth graders uh, for an entire day for 18 years, and that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, a lot of people joke about that, but um, let's see, let me give Jen access real quick. Um, but, you know, I absolutely loved my... Um, Eighth graders, um, they um, they kept me on my toes and let's see. All right, Janet, could you help me along by, let's see, putting your email address in the chat? Um, but I taught in Tennessee and Kentucky and, um, from there I moved to, um, Virginia and Okay, so hopefully you can access that now. Um, in 2012, and have had the um, opportunity to work with a lot of you in the GLOBE community. Um, but it was last year that I um, received the opportunity to be a part of the US GLOBE Partner Forum. 
And one of the reasons that I wanted to be a part of that is because of my passion for GLOBE and the GLOBE community and all of the individuals that I've had the privilege of working with. And thinking back as a classroom teacher to what a benefit it would have been to my classroom and my students if I had had the opportunity to be a part of GLOBE and not having the opportunity to hear about GLOBE while I was a classroom teacher, I wanted to do my part to make sure that teachers do hear the story of GLOBE and are able to be a part of that. And so as a part of the US Partner Forum, not only am I excited about being able to share um, about GLOBE and get that word out to educators, but I also want to be able to be available to be a resource um, for teachers to be able to come to and you know that, that might not understand exactly how they can incorporate GLOBE within their classroom. Um, and I can hear them and I can think back to when I was in the classroom and I can relate to, to some of their concerns or, or things that they might have questions about. So I'm very excited to be a part of the U.S. Partner Forum, uh, and I look forward to working with you all in the future, as well as the other members of the forum. And if there's anything that we can do for you in the GLOBE community as a part of that U.S. Partner Forum, please, please let us know. Um, so Jen, if you'll go to the next slide. So I was very excited about the opportunity, if you'll go back one, there we go. Um, I was very excited about the opportunity to share about my partnership, but when Jen said I was supposed to share about me, that's where I was like, ah, I'd rather talk about my partnership. But anyway, a little bit about me to get started. Um, I am from Kentucky. I grew up in Kentucky along the Mississippi River. In fact, I could walk from my house to the river. And I spent a lot of time on the river. Um, and, you know, being from Kentucky, you have to love horses. And uh, I had a passion for horses. And then, you know, I never seemed to be able to make it back home without having a rock in my pocket. Uh, Mom, when she would do the laundry, would be very uh, upset because I failed to always remember to take those rocks out of my pocket. Um, and so I spent a lot of time outside and I loved being outdoors. I loved um, all the things that I got to experience as a child growing up. We lived in the middle of nowhere. And so, you know, I didn't have a lot of the restrictions that children have today. And I was able to explore and to investigate on my own. Um, I always had a journal in my hand and was taking down notes and drawing sketches. And my favorite thing to sketch were trees, um, which ties in really awesome with some of the tree studies that I do with camps these days. And then my inspiration as a child, um, you know, aside from the fact that my parents loved me and all of that, is I had a very special teacher. And uh, Miss Alexa was my fifth grade um, math teacher. And at the time, I knew that I liked math and I knew that I enjoyed science, but it wasn't something that was encouraged uh, for a girl growing up in the very small town that I grew up in. But Miss Alexa, she wouldn't hear it. She told me that I should be proud to be good at math. I should, you know, continue to love math and to to see the value of math and to know that I had a lot of options available to me through that. Um, and then after um, uh, sixth grade, um, I, I left middle school and became homeschooled. And I was homeschooled for the rest of my educational career and until I went to college. And I actually had to leave home before I could go to college. Um, my father was a minister and didn't feel that I should pursue a college degree. But I went on to do that and I went to um, the University of Tennessee at Martin and I received my um, bachelor in um, early childhood education. Um, started student teaching in kindergarten, realized rather quickly that that was not for me 
uh, and went back and got my master's degree in secondary science education. And that's where I really found my true passion and my love for earth science um, as I worked with a uh, geology professor who once again saw something in me that I not necessarily saw in myself. Uh, and so from there, um, as I was a classroom teacher for 18 years and, and just continually loved earth science and the passion that I had, that brought me to NASA Langley in 2012, where I've had the opportunity to work with um, the GLOW program uh, uh, as part of GLOBE Mission Earth and Manesic. Um, I also work with my NASA data and the GLOBE Clouds team there at NASA Langley. Uh, in the bottom, you'll see a picture of my family, um, which I'm very proud of. My husband, who is my best cheerleader on the right. Uh, and so Jen, if you'll go on to the next slide. So where is NASA Langley? NASA Langley is in Hampton, Virginia. Uh, and we um, send out a hello to all of you and thank you for joining us today to learn more about our partnership. Next slide, Jen. This is a picture of our amazing team and I have the best team to work with of all teams available within the GLOBE partnership. I am completely sure of that. And I know that a lot of you recognize the faces within this picture and it's a joy to work with every person in this picture. And we all have stories that we've shared together, um, but even through last year, um, and even though we've been working remotely and, and the, the teamwork that we've had and the work that we've been able to accomplish, I, I'm very honored to be able to work with this team. Next slide, Jen. We, um, this was obviously before COVID hit, um, but we have a lot of fun with the work that we do. We get to participate in a lot of outreach efforts. And uh, in the center there at the bottom is our fearless leader, Jessica Taylor, who is the, the mind behind um, our, our partnership. We're very, very thankful for her and the, the freedom that she gives us to be the people that we are with the passions that we have for the work that we're all doing together. Uh, next slide, Jen. Um, as part of my task within um, the uh, NISIC, uh, I'm also part of the co-lead for the American Camp Association. Back in 2019, we began to work with camps within NASA Langley Partnership and reaching out to them and, and bringing GLOBE to the camp community. And within that, um, I've had the opportunity since 2019 to also work with the American Camp Association. Next slide. So in 2019, we started the GLOBE Goes to Camp pilot. And we, we knew that we wanted to work with informal audiences. We knew that we wanted to um, bring the Globe Observer app as well as the protocols and learning activities within Globe and the Globe community to an informal audience. And we began to think hard about what we felt would be the best fit for the Globe program. And we felt very strongly that camps uh, would be a, a, a perfect audience for us to reach out to. And so with that um, initial camp pilot in 2019, we started with three camps and we began developing um, pacing guides to provide them with step-by-step -step instructions about how to implement GLOBE within the camp setting. And then based on the work that we did in 2019, we received feedback from them that we then continued to use to revise um, the pacing guides and even adapting learning activities based on the feedback that they gave us. Because you know, the camp facilitators and the camp directors are the ones that know best what works within the camp environment. And so we learned a lot from, from 2019 within that um, pilot program. 
And then we were geared up and ready for 2020 with the, the Globe uh, Camp Pilot. And we had our pacing guides in place. We had eager camps uh, that had applied to be a part of the pilot. And so in January and February, we were beginning to um, coordinate with those camp directors and get geared up for the summer of 2020 and all of the fabulous in-person camp opportunities that we were gonna bring to campers. And we all know that in March, things began to change. Um, and as a result, uh, a lot of the camps that I was working with at that time actually um, found themselves closing. And so I had to begin to think through not only the, the resources uh, from GLOBE and GLOBE Observer and even Elementary GLOBE um, and how they were best fitted for camps, but now I needed to do that through a virtual lens. And so we began providing a lot of virtual types of connections um, that we provided to, to the camp programs. Uh, next slide. One of the types of programs that we did offer was in, in um, alignment with the tree, um, Globe Tree Challenge and, or campaign that was going, uh, was also supposed to have occurred last year. And we began to work with camps and providing them resources um, that they could share out with their families that they were working with. Because what we found is that the camps that were still continuing instead of just working with campers, we're gonna be working with families um, of, of the campers. And so we began to do what was called Friends of the Forest. Um, and we did that through Camp Discovery in, Blythe, in uh, Blythewood, South Carolina. And they implemented uh, a lot of virtual tree hikes and they would actually connect with their families and they would do hikes and they would take them and they would show them trees and they would talk to them about the trees in their area. And then they would encourage the families um, to actually explore the trees in their own yard or in their own communities. And these were two of the activities that Camp or Discovery actually implemented and developed um, to support that work. Next slide, Jen. Now these are obviously camp pictures prior to COVID. And um, we, this, these were primarily taken from Camp Discovery and they did a lot of water quality and they did the, the macro invertebrate activities. Uh, they did uh, cloud in a jar activities. And I just love the expressions on those campers faces, all of them. Um, you know, the ones that are, they're getting to explore the creek um, the ones that are seeing the cloud in the jar and realizing how a cloud forms. Um, that's why I love the work that I'm able to do with camps. Those faces and the looks upon those faces. Next slide, Jen. So part of the camp experiences was the data collection piece. And they actually would collect data, which they would enter um, in GLOBE. And then at the ends of the week, I would actually connect with them um, and talk to the kids about the data they collected. And so that was, um, I think, as rewarding an experience for me as it was for the campers. But it was really neat to realize that, that they could look at their data and see patterns and trends and answer questions. Um, and of course, you know, it helped that I had taught eighth grade and a lot of the campers I was working with uh, were in that sixth to eighth grade range. And just to be able to, to ask them questions and get them thinking and get them excited about what they were doing and help them to realize that as part of GLOBE and the GLOBE community, they were able to be, be scientists, even where they were in their camp. Next slide. Not only did Camp Discovery do work in the camp setting, but they also took that and did school programs with it as well. And one of the programs they did with GLOBE uh, was Wacky Weather. 
which was a really cool uh, program that they did. Next slide, Jen. So in the midst of COVID, once things did begin to open back up, Camp Discovery continued to work with families in their neighborhood and they continued to do GLOBE. And um, you can see the picture with the girl that's still investigating the tree. And uh, so they had a lot of positive um, interaction within their community. And they taught us a lot about how to continue to, to make those connections and work with families, even within the restrictions of COVID. And a lot of those have been written up as far as how to continue in areas that might not be able to even have in-person camps this summer. Next slide. I also worked with two uh, interns and um, the one on the left, um, she, Lucy, she was actually uh, a facilitator at Camp Discovery. And then uh, I worked with Olivia who worked with an after school program in Newport News in, in uh, Virginia. Next slide. So this year already we have um, six camps that are signed up to be a part of the pilot and we are taking applications for the, the GLOBE Goes to Camp pilot um, all the way through the end of March. If you know of camps in your area that might be interested in connecting with us, just let us know. Um, the camps that we're working with in the pilot are also part of a cohort that um, I'm working with right now uh, to train in the GLOBE protocols of cloud service temperature and trees so that when they do um, uh, the, the camp connections this summer, whether they're doing those in person or virtual, they'll have the training that they need uh, to implement that. Next slide. Jen, how long do I have? Uh, you have until, I mean, we have 15 minutes left. Okay, so. perfect. All right, thank you very much. I just wanna um, leave time for questions. Okay, all right. Um, so within our partnership, aside from the, the camp work that um, I'm doing, uh, we also have the Globe Clouds team and you'll see the different uh, members of that team pictured here. And they are busy, busy people. Um, throughout uh, last year, it, it amazes me at all that they were able to accomplish. Um, you know, we still had a family uh, cloud challenge, uh, lots of learning activities that were implemented. Uh, we have members of the team that do Spanish trans translations, and then the satellite match, which Tina Rogerson uh, is instrumental in implementing, is an amazing component of the work that our team does. Uh, we were a uh, part of doing the, the cloud family guide that provided families with a lot of resources that they could use with their children during a time when families were struggling to, to keep their kids um, actively engaged in learning. And we were very excited about how that, that guide turned out. Um, we provided SME connections, um, you know, for educators that were providing uh, asynchronous as well as synchronous types of instruction, we were able to um, pro uh, provide SME connections. Uh, we did a lot of classroom uh, connections as well as those with educators. Um, we did uh, science cafes and panel discussions and um, different ones were interviewed by students. So just a lot of things that we were able to respond with as part of helping our educators within GLOBE to be able to continue the awesome work that they're doing. Um, we did have some uh, GLOBE cloud articles that were published uh, last year that we're very proud of. And then also the, the continued GLOBE uh, support that we provide for student research projects. Next slide. The, the Family Cloud Challenge, um, we did have some amazing scientists that, that connected with us to help make that successful. And this was a image on the right of the choice chart that we used 
um, because of the fact that we were in the middle of COVID and we didn't feel safe asking people to always go out and make a cloud observation, we provided them with a choice chart where they could um, identify what uh, was safe for them to do at the time and still be a part uh, of that challenge and um, be able to learn about clouds and still be engaged in that learning experience. Next slide. Uh, part of that family guide were a lot of really amazing videos that our team did, um, a lot of which were learning activity demos because we understood that a lot of families would want to do activities with their children, but they might not have the, um, the, the understanding of how to do that. So our team um, not only did informational videos about clouds, but we also did a series of videos that were based on globe learning activities and just shared with the families how to do the activity, um, what types of materials to use, and those were a lot of fun to do. And also um, our, our team, they just amazed me, you know, put them in front of a camera and they were just, you thought they had training. They were great. So proud of them. Next slide, Jen. Uh, here is Tina Ryderson. I told you about the satellite match uh, that she uh, oversees and the fact that we have that ability when someone uh, does submit a cloud observation for them to receive a satellite match, showing them what the satellite saw at the time they made their observation. That has been a really big hit. Uh, I mean, who doesn't love getting an email back from NASA that says, this is what you observed and this is what the satellite saw. And for them to realize they're really a part of NASA, that's pretty amazing. I can think back to my kids in my classroom would have flipped out. It would have been like, oh my goodness gracious, we got an email from NASA? So I just see that as such an awesome way for us to interact with educators and their students and I even had some camps that were just really excited about the opportunity to get a satellite match. Next slide. Um, we did uh, do some work, Merle primarily did that uh, with some scientists looking at dust data that was collected. And then the article on the left uh, was in, an, in NSTA. And we're very excited about that work that spotlights two of our classroom teachers and the work that they're doing with clouds and globe in their classrooms. Next slide. Um, we have one of our interns. He started out with us in high school and he uh, interned with us, did some amazing work. And now he's in college and he is back with us at this time, helping us look at GLOBE data and looking for uh, errors within that data and how to better assist us in the cloud uh, satellite matches that we do. Next slide. Marilay and one of the videos that I mentioned before, um, but also and the work that she's doing in helping with student research. Next slide. Then we have the MyNASA data team and they have done a tremendous job of trying to align with the various elements um, of GLOBE in uh, the sphere alignment of the data that we provide from NASA Earth data that is available uh, from the MyNASA data site. The phenomena story maps that we did, a lot of which are aligned with GLOBE and GLOBE protocols. Uh, the, we have several STEM career connection pieces that are aligned with GLOBE. Uh, just teacher support that is provided to our GLOBE partners and our GLOBE teachers, even through MyNASA data and the GLOBE Mission Earth Project. Uh, so the MyNASA team is, is working very hard to uh, provide virtual resources to educators that incorporate GLOBE data and a lot of data literacy type activities. Next slide. You can see from this image, the, the sphere alignment. Next slide. 
And these are our phenomena aligned story maps um, that we have available, a lot of which include uh, some pieces of globe within them, especially the urban heat islands. Next slide. And our team uh, did work to align the, the protocols uh, from GLOBE with the various data sets that can be found within MyNASA data. Next slide. They also have demonstrated how the Earth System Data Explorer within MyNASA data can be used to support GLOBE uh, student research. Next slide. And this is a, um, those of you who have done the elementary globe activity, weather adds up to climate. This is taking that uh, paper copy type of data collection and putting it into an interactive. Um, and you're a, they're actually able via the MyNASA data website to assign this to their students virtually. And the students can still continue to log the weather that's going on in their area. So we're very excited about this new resource. Next page, or next slide, sorry. And then um, Angie and Margaret, or Angie Rizzi and, and Dr. Margaret Pippen have done a lot in air quality. And they actually did a, a webinar series recently uh, that uh, was um, well received within the GLOBE community. And they provide a lot of support to teachers uh, GLOW teachers that are interested in looking at um, air quality. Is that the last slide, Jen? Okay, very good. So, as you can see, our team and our partnership, um, they're doing a lot. And I, I'm, I'm just very thankful to be able to work with this team and to know that we bring a lot to GLOBE teachers and that we are providing a lot of resources to help them. You know, thinking back to, to being a classroom teacher, I can't imagine uh, what teachers have lived through in trying to continue to provide students uh, with um, the learning experiences that, that they need. And so knowing that we were able to be there for them during this time uh, just brings me a lot of pride. Uh, in, in our team and the effort that we're doing through NASA Langley. And I could, could have talked for an hour or two more to tell you all about the wonderful things they're doing. But uh, alas, we only had a short amount of time today. So if there are things that you would wanna know more about, please feel free to reach out. Thank you, Tina. That was great. Uh, great summary of everything you're doing. Um, and some really great, nice examples of things that you're doing too with COVID and social distancing and providing resources to meet the needs of teachers that are teaching um, remotely.